Hey everybody, welcome to another Goodie Reader video comparison. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're going to give you part two of the nighttime reading test between the Amazon Kindle Paperwhite and the Como Glow. We've received a number of emails and user comments on our YouTube channel about our previous video. One of the things that we want to do in this edition is to really show you uh, the way that both of these two e-readers could employ different degrees of lighting to give you the best light depending on your environmental circumstance. We're almost in complete darkness. We're not as in complete darkness as we were in, in an initial video. And so what we really want to do is do both of you readers justice by sort of finding the sweet spot. Uh, you can see here that we're on chapter two of the exact same book. And you can see that the paper white, fairly white, Kobo Glow, a little bit blue. What can we do to solve this situation? So. This is about how bright it goes to max. And then depending on where you are, you can kind of find that sweet spot. It looks a little bit whiter now. And I think it's important to sort of test the lighting levels in different, you know, light environments to kind of find that spot. In complete darkness, you may want to tone it down. If you're in a lighter room, you may want to, you know, turn the brightness up. I mean, it all depends. Absolutely. No, I do agree. I mean, it's all based on where you are. I mean, if you're in a completely dark room, if you're in a, you know, going to bed at night and you know, street lights are on, everything can kind of factor in. Um, I must say, this is a much whiter look to the Cobalt Glow. However, it's much brighter. If you turn it down, we're getting kind of the same, it's, it's the same kind of light projecting out. However, the Cobalt Glow still looks a little bit blue and purpley we can change that you know by going brighter but on the initial review we had it up to here because like the Kindle Paperwhite we had them both termed up to the full so we were more showing you the reading experience with the glow light at its maximum potential but as Michael said we, re we re received comments uh, that kind of outlined it's not all about how bright it can go it's about the best reading experience which is why we're doing this review yeah exactly so we're not going to really say too much other than just like basically tweak it because a lot of people are thinking about getting either of these devices but really want the best glow experience because there's very few e-readers on the market that actually uh, have the front light glowing feature with the lights built into the bezel incidentally both lights have light coming out of the bottom of the bezel from the bottom. I like that setting you had right there. That's pretty good. That that does the cobalt that does the cobalt glow definite justice. You're seeing a very nice contrast. Um, you're seeing not too much light coming out. You're it's actually almost matching the Kindle paper white in terms of its contrast, the white on uh, black on white, the black text on white background. I think that's a good level. So it's looking at about 40 to 45 percent um, uh, of the glow light turned all the way up, that seems to be a good uh, that seems to be a good level at which to keep it. And uh, you can see here the paper white. We can also augment our lighting experience by turning it down. So if you don't want that harsh glare on your eyes, you can turn it down a little bit. You can turn it down even further, or you can turn it off altogether, and uh, you will be able to find that perfect level. But it seems that even at its most extreme glow light. Uh, level it does not really affect the text whereas on the Kobo glow at its maximum which can come in handy to have that much glow in a completely dark environment that could be the, the deal breaker but it seems that yeah you want to sit at about 40 to 45 percent of the bar at the bottom to get that optimal setting from a glow point of view the Kobo glow is brighter mm -hmm. so it, it has a, a way brighter maximum setting than uh, the Amazon Kindle Paperwhite does. One of the things I liked about uh, the Kobo Glow is the ability to actually make text brighter and darker depending on how bright you have your display at. So you can increase the sharpness, you could increase or decrease the weight. 
so you can get a higher contrast like on the text so you can see what we have here whereas uh, the kindle doesn't really have that feature it does not you're kind of dealing with the same set of settings we've seen all the way back since the kindle keyboard and the kindle 2 kind of thing you got uh, eight or nine levels of text six to eight depending on the model levels of uh, or styles of font and then you have your line spacing to um space things out a little bit more or condense them to a column so you can see everything changes live down below there but no there is no uh, font uh, there's no font um, weight and sharpness settings on an ebook okay so th both of these e-readers have a side loaded edition of this book that we're looking at here and one of the things that the Kindle did really well was allow you to change the margins and the line spaces and things like that with with some of the Kobo e EPUB books, especially if you side load them, it's sometimes hard in many cases to change the the margins and the line spacing. This is because when you uh, when you convert books uh, using like Caliber or other programs, they have some books have like fixed C CSS layouts, which means that it's hard layered into the book itself to say, okay, the margins are this size, the padding is this size, um, the line spacing is, is such and such a size. So with Caliber, there are options to just strip the book completely of that, and then you'll be able to change the line space and the margins. Any book that you purchase from Kobo, you should be able to change that. But with side loaded books, um, especially books that have been converted with ebook programs like Caliber and stuff like that, Stanza uh, and whatnot, you might have some problems with adjusting the line spaces and margins. But that's only with EPUBs. If you use text, RTF, HTML, um, you're not restricted in any way with being able to change the line space and the margins. So this is a, just a simple, um, you know, experience. As you can see with our previous thing, uh, trading page is if you do them at the exact same time, um, are are pretty quickly. So you're not really suffering from uh, some of Kobo's earlier models had a little bit of delay when you turn pages. Uh, with this model, you don't. Of course, you can do full highlights, definitions, take notes, and uh, do a lot more other things. Share things with like Facebook and stuff like that. Um, final thoughts, Peter. Um, yeah, at first, uh, like we said in our previous reviews, we were showing the glow lights at their full potential, but uh, based on the comments, we're now showing you a uh, more suitable range in which to have the Kobo set. It looks like, like I said before, if you're catching this video near the end, um, 40 to 50 percent looks like the optimal settings to match that of the Kindle Paperwhite's maximum level. Although the Kobo is brighter, that's not necessarily always well necessary to have it that bright so I think yeah keeping it 40 50 percent matches that of the Kindle Paperwhite the Barnes & Noble Glow uh, gives it gives it more of a well does it justice as I said before really shows the potential of the screen rather than how light how bright the lights go yeah at, at obviously in even a semi dark room at a full setting it's almost too bright um, in person the text is still readable on camera it looks like you know the brightness is obfuscating like the text so this is just because of the camera but some people may find their real life situation like that whereas if we turn it down all of a sudden the text has more contrast saturation it's popping up more um, it's all a matter of finding that sweet spot so we want to hear your comments let us know what you think if you have any ideas for future videos or future comparisons drop us a line um, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash goodyreader, and you can visit our website for all the latest news, previews, interviews, and everything else at goodyreader.com. And for Goody Reader, my name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.